Welcome to the second video of endotracheal intubation video series. Please make sure you watch these videos in order as I build on the information mentioned on the previous videos. So now you decided to intubate this patient. What's next? Probably if you still new in the endotracheal intubation, your adrenaline will be rising now. But hold on, we're not there yet. The first question you should have is, is there any contraindication to intubate this patient? The most common contraindication to intubate a patient is that the patient himself or herself does not want to be intubated, what we call do not intubate status. So it's very important that we check code status before we proceed with intubation because it did happen that patient got intubated and after the fact, we found they, they have do not intubate status. And of course, the family was not happy with this decision. So it's very important to check on that. Now, if there is no code status and the patient is still awake and alert, that you can discuss this with the patient, do it. I usually, I usually ask them or tell them, hey, we need really to put you asleep and put a tube down your throat and connect you to a respirator. Is that okay with you? And of course, you need to pick your patient. If you have somebody who's very young, there is really no need to have this discussion. But if you have somebody who's really elderly with multiple comorbidities, it's better to have this, this, this discussion. Of course, that's if you have time. Maybe the patient is just crashing. And in that case, if there is no clear decision about or no clear code status, just go ahead and intubate them. On the other hand, if you have a little bit of time, you can talk to the patient and the patient either will, they will nod their head yes, proceed, or they will tell you no. And sometimes they follow to the question and say that for how long I will be on a respirator. And of course, the answer we don't know. That's the truth that I tell them we don't know. It could be quickly, it could take long time, and you may never come off the respirator. Now, if the patient cannot make a decision and still you have time to call the power of attorney or the family, do it. Maybe the patient have told them in the past he or she does not want to be intubated. And that happened. And when the family know uh, when the family gets informed that the patient is intubated, usually they get mad. Why didn't you, you call? Why didn't you call us? But again, if you don't have really time to do that and there is no clear code status, just go ahead and intubate them. Now, the other contraindication is a history of very difficult intubation that the patient needs to have a tracheostomy or cricothyrotomy. In this case, I would at least call an experienced physician, like an anesthesiologist, um, an ENT surgeon, or at least have somebody ready to do a cricothyrotomy or tracheostomy if I cannot intubate this patient. But this is a red flag to me, for sure call a backup and have somebody that able to do, if you cannot do it yourself, able to do cricothyrotomy or tracheostomy at bedside. Laryngeal trauma, facial trauma, Tracheal trauma, of course, I will hold off and I will not do it myself. I'll call a trauma surgeon or an ENT specialist or anesthesiologist. I'll let them make a decision whether this, whether this patient can be intubated. I'll let them do with that procedure, but I will not really touch these patients intubation-wise. Now we decided this patient need to be intubated, no contraindication to intubate this patient. Now the adrenaline should be rising. Ask yourself and be honest with yourself. How comfortable are you with endotracheal intubation? Do you need a backup? Do you need an experienced backup? This is my advice to you. Always have a backup there at bedside or very close by that can come right away when we need to. If the following, if you're still inexperienced in endotracheal intubation, you're still junior level, if I can say, in endotracheal intubation, always have a backup. If difficult intubation anticipated, so when do I suspect this intubation can be difficult? If there is any history of difficult intubation in the past for this patient, if the anatomy looking difficult, the patient is obese, morbidly obese, fat neck, if there is C color, if there is a trauma, neck trauma, neck injury, facial trauma, always have backup if difficult intubation anticipated. And again, this backup should be either at bedside or should be very close by that when called can get there as quickly as possible. Who are these possibly backups? Somebody from your colleagues who are very experienced in endotracheal intubation, could be an ER physician, could be an anesthesiologist, 
could be an anti-specialist, could be a trauma surgeon, depends on the situation. Now we decided to proceed with the intubation. The patient has no contraindication to intubate and I have an experienced provider ready to help me when needed. Now it's time to get this set up to have a successful, quick, smooth endotracheal intubation. So what do we need to have this smooth, quick endotracheal intubation. Personal-wise, we need at least one to two nurses because nurses will be the one who are giving the medication to the patients. One to two respiratory therapists because respiratory therapists will be the one who will help ventilate the patient, will be the one help hand you the endotracheal tube, will be the one who will pull the stylus, will be the one who will inflate the balloon, and will be the one who will be securing the ET tube in place. Devices-wise, we need, of course, laryngoscopy, and we'll talk about this in details soon. Laryngoscopy is the device that will allow you to visualize the vocal cord and put the ET tube or insert the ET tube through them. You need an ET tube, so you need an ET tube with a stylus, and you need to pick the size, of course. You make sure it's a good endotracheal tube, and we'll talk about this soon as well. You need a suction device ready for you to use it whenever needed because the mouth could be full of blood, saliva, aspiration material, whatever. You may need a bougie, which we'll talk about it soon as well. An oral airway, which helps secure the airway, make sure the airway is patent. Because sometimes when you sedate these patient and paralyze them, sometimes the tongue can block the airway. So you always need to have that at your disposal and you can use it right away you don't need to wait until the patient block their airways and it's very important to keep looking at the chest rise of the patient we'll talk about that soon and of course you need the ambu bag ready for you or bag valve mask ventilation of course and you need a co2 detector which is one of the way to confirm the correct position of the et tube now monitor wise we will need definitely the patient need to be in the monitor where we can monitor their pulse oximetry and tidal CO2 if possible, heart rate, heart rhythm, blood pressure. Also, we need a crash car standby, just in case. And sometimes the patient crashing, you better just put those pads on the patient and be ready just in case. And then you need the medication to sedate and paralyze the patient if needed, or what we call the RSI kit, the rapid sequence intubation or induction kit, whatever you call it. And we'll talk about that in details very soon. Now you need all of this. So the question, how quickly you can get this set up ready for you? Remember, most of cases we need to intubate in the hospital are either urgent or emergent. So you need to get this set up as quickly as possible. Each hospital has its own policy in, in activating uh, this procedure. For example, in my hospital, we can call respiratory rapid response and we'll get this set up as quickly as possible for me. Also, if the patient is, is crashing and you have to do it right away, just don't hesitate to push the code blue button, which will get you everything you need as quickly as possible as well. So check your hospital policy in that matter. All right, next video, we'll talk about laryngoscopies and their different types. We'll talk about the ET tube and the stylets. So please, if you find this video useful, don't forget to like it and share it with your colleagues. And if you have not subscribed to our channel yet, make sure you tap that subscribe button. I'll see you next video.